I would say 99.99999% of America <laughs> will never say the word, ah, nothing too crazy, and <laughs> anal plugs in the same sentence. Well. Welcome to the On The Edge podcast with your host, Scott Groves. Oh so God. tell me, I, I don't really know how to phrase this other than yeah. to just say it. Um, what's it like being an attractive girl in Vegas? Because oh. I know I know you're into the... EDC thing and like am. Dante was telling me that like if he needs uh, atmosphere or girls to like just a bunch of hot chicks to come out and like entertain and no no expectation anything other right. than that just, yeah. just to be a pretty girl at the club right yeah. to make fe people feel popular or whatnot yeah um that like sometimes he'll call on you and your friends yeah. so like what's it like being a hot girl in Vegas well first of all thank you uh it's just I feel like Vegas is for the ladies like it I'm, not to brag or anything, but like, it's very true. Like us women get a lot of free things out here and we get free bottles, free club entry, free tables. Like right. you will never catch these men getting these free things. You know, you have to pay to get in. Like you ask for some free shit, you're going to get laughed at. Right, so right. it's, it's nice. It's nice being a woman. Um, and just, kind of just like going with the flow like Dante's amazing so right when I moved out here I met him and he's been my guy ever since so just he's always able to get me a table if I would need one or invite me out with him on the weekends to join his table and free bottle service free this and that it's just it's nice so on that that spectrum it's it's nice yeah definitely yeah and what what do you see as like a, a shelf life on this lifestyle whether it's elaborate like only fans being would go out and drink a couple nights a week, like party. You have to, have a, you have to find a nice balance. You got to find a nice balance. Yeah. yeah so that's hard. with your balance, do you think you're like at like a couple years in you of this? Is it like, ah, I can do this till I'm 30 and then it's going to be time to like settle down and get an office job or move out to suburbia and find a nice man to marry and have kids. Like, what do you think the shelf life on like the party <laughs> life is? Probably hopefully another couple of years. Okay. I'm I'm not trying to do the OnlyFans thing forever. It was just like a side hustle to get kind of more cash coming in for a while. And yeah. obviously the world's kind of back to the way it was. So right. it's, you know, probably just a, a little while longer with the OnlyFans until I get into like real estate and stuff and start making money off of that. But, and like same thing with the party and like you have to find a nice balance. And I feel like I have been recently because uh, I mean, you're in Vegas, you're in the party scene. You always want to go out and party. I'm always getting invited to go out. It's hard to say no sometimes, but yeah. you know, and then I go out and then I go out on Sunday night and then I'm just hung over Monday, horrible way to start the week. Like, right. Just, Can't do that. Yeah. Can't party so, hard on Sunday. No, I try not to. Cause it's just, I try to just start my week. Nice, fresh. I just Friday night, Saturday night, I go out Sunday night. I'm in to stay. <laughs> so yeah, in a way. I and what does balance found. look like for you? Is it like, do you have a nine to five job at the no, solar place? So, or do you yeah. So with so I work for a solar company, Helios energy. It's amazing. Um, but I'm the hiring manager, so I get people off Indeed, ZipRecruiter. I interview them. Um, well, first of all, I look at their resume to see if they're even, even worthy to interview. Then if they are, I set up an interview, interview them. If I like them, I set them up with a second interview to meet with our CEO of the company, Taylor Krause. Um, and then he could bring them onto the team if he likes them or not. But other than that, I kind of have the say in who gets brought onto the team. I also handle contracts and stuff for deals that are closed and stuff like that. So it's kind of very flexible, you know, um, anything that needs to be done, I do it. Sometimes I'm his little assistant. So like he'll like have me order him groceries on Instacart or, right. you know, handle his Instagram posts or stuff like that. So it's very easy and, and, and lenient. So I feel like nice. you're really, I feel like you're really entrepreneurial because when we were yes. talking before we started recording, you're like, I got the, I got the real job, quote unquote, and I got the <laughs> side hustle with OnlyFans. And then that leads to other like DM opportunities. Yeah. And then I've got this little thing over here that I'm doing this. Like, like how many streams of income do you have? I have three at the moment. Okay. You can never have too much money coming in. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, <laughs> I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I could, yeah, I could have more, but. And when you file your 2022 taxes, we'll look it over with you so that you can buy a house because I know you want to buy a house, buy some investment properties. I do. And then just um, go from there, right? Yes, and start yes. making cash off other people. Yes, yes. Without taking your clothes off. Yes, yes. I am hoping to do that in the Is very it, near future. Speaking of OnlyFans and taking your clothes off, has yeah. anybody gotten so weird that you like had to block them or can't, can you kick people off? You could block them, yes, yes. And I have had people like they're so rude that you give them what they want and they're just like still unsatisfied and they're just like really mean about it or like just like they just feel like they could just talk to you whatever way they want to. And right. it's like, excuse you, I am a person too, you know? Right, right, right. right. But, so yeah, 20 I've bucks also, a month is only 20 bucks a right, month. Right, like, sit down. <laughs> so right. I've also had, yeah, 
dicks in my DMs that I've had to block. But for the most part, everyone seems to be understanding and and sweet, that, you know, but obviously some dicks here and there. I can't understand. I really cannot understand the <laughs> dick pic day. thing. It's like, oh. it's like I, okay, I had my first cell phone when I was in the army at 19. I think I, 18, 19. I've had the same cell phone number ever wow. since then. Oh my you God. know, pictures were like came out like a couple years later. The farthest thing from anybody's mind was taking a picture of your junk and sending it via phone. And now that's like that's like an opening line that's, from what I hear. And it's it's ridiculous because it's like we don't want to see that shit unless we ask for it or unless you're pay, you're paying for it. So I charge I charge twenty five dollars for a dick rating. So wait, 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 <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. so <laughs> all right, not safe for work. We just got kicked off of of YouTube, but I have to ask twenty five dollars for a dick rating. Yes, yes. So you could send your picture of it and I could rate it or $30 for a detail. So I can send like a voice memo of like whatever. So some people, I mean, there's a lot of guys that do that, but some guys will just send it right away. And it's like, Oh my God, I try to ignore it when they send it. I'll ignore it. And I'll just be uh tip 25 for a rating. So I'll respond to their dick pic with tip 25 for a rating. <laughs> so that's what they get in, in response to just how many showing people, me their dick. How many people pay you 25 how many people have paid you 25 dollars to talk about okay. their i can't count probably a couple hundred now it's been three years since i've been doing this it's it's pretty popular hundreds for people of people have that. paid you money to like look at their penis and then yes. tell them what you think yes. about yes a lot of guys want opinions on it yeah or some guys will send it and be like oh make fun of it you know and I'd be like oh my god that dick is so small like you know, you could never be with a girl like me. <laughs> like, yeah, just crazy stuff. People pay for this? <laughs> yes. But I charge 40 for Findom. So Findom starts at $40 because people that are into that role are most more likely to pay more anyways. So if you want me to make fun of you, it's going to be a little bit more. Oh yeah. my God. Chris, did you know that this was all a thing? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if you can see in the camera right now. My eyes are like <laughs> bugging out of my head. It's so is this funny. like, is this common knowledge amongst Americans? And I'm just that <laughs> prude and far behind. The gays do it too. The oh gays do God. it too. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Chris, when are we building mm -hmm. your only fan? We could be rich. I've noticed the Findom world of the gays tends to revolve around feet for whatever yeah, reason. Yes, yes. There's a couple uh, gay guys that I follow on Twitter that are like just post fi pictures of like their dirty feet all in the camera and like which bitch boy is going to sit like send me send me a certain amount to to clean my feet or to lick my feet or something like a lot of the gays do it like you just said i yeah. draw the line at dirty feet like everything you've said it could, i could see how some of this could be a turn on yeah. but the feces foot fetish the is foot. the most popular fetish in the world one shut out of the, ten yeah. people shut yeah. the fuck up people want to see dirty souls one dirty out of ten feet. people one out, no wow, really? no i know uh, wow. i chris one out of I've, 10? I've had a lot of deep conversations with men about sexuality <laughs> i have never ever ever met a man who's like i can't wait to look at some feet <laughs> Do you think you really hang out with average people? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> All right. From now on, every podcast, we're going to finish with like, what are you excited about? What's your favorite movie? And do you have a foot fetish? Foot fetish? <laughs> yeah, that, that's every podcast now. I'd be like, you I got to take know. a poll. You I got to know. Because statistically, we've done now like 150, 160 episodes. Wow. That means like 15 dudes that we've talked to have a foot fetish. Oh, probably. I mean, I sort of do in a way. I love feet. What? Yeah, I not so much men's feet, but I think women's feet are are is, what? is a work of art. Everything about women are more beautiful. <laughs> like, know. like I'm shocked there's any straight women to begin with because guys are just like gross and I hairy know. and have things protruding. I know. I wish I liked women. I really, I really do. I do. I love them, but I just I wish I liked them in a way I I, I like men. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it, it doesn't make any sense. Feet. No, it Man. doesn't. I know, isn't it crazy? I'm so confused. You want to take a shot to that? Yeah, I'm so prude. <laughs> I don't mean to oh. offer your, up your alcohol, but I would love maybe another shot if right, you're down go. for it. Let's go. I um, still uh, haven't learned how to hit this cigar. <laughs> here we go. We're fine. We're fine. But well, it's okay. Um, it's okay. For anybody still watching, we're back to the Hocking Hills bourbon. This is good shit, man. You better be still um, watching. This again, is a fun podcast. This is a fun podcast. Again, shout out to John because, John, I love you. Thank you for mm -hmm. the bourbon. Yeah, And thanks, apparently John. it was excellent. You can now take my um, uh, Don't Tread on Me shot glass. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Don't tread on me. By the way, I looked it up and it's 700,000 population in Nevada. But even Ooh. then, if it's under 700, the county can still vote on whether or not they uh, are into the prostitution. Or, wow. Or interesting. That is interesting. Over 10, Especially 10 out in 10% of prostitution in Nevada is legal. <laughs> and it's a it's like a $90 million industry, which means the illegal 
prostitution in Nevada is a two to five billion dollar industry. Wow. Illegal prostitution is billions of dollars. Wow. Yeah, Wikipedia wow. for the win. Wikipedia, oh right on. I can't believe everything you hear on Wikipedia. Dude, I was sitting at the, <laughs> but I, I believe was, that. I was sitting at the win one time <laughs> in my twenties and you know, in retrospect, sometimes I'm like, ah, I wish I would have done it. Yeah. And then other times I'm like, no, I can't do it. Um, but I was uh, I was playing poker. I came up here a lot in my 20s because I had a couple of friends that were professional poker players. So we yeah. come up like, you know, L.A. It's like yeah. a few hours. Not too bad. Come up twice a, twice a month. And like I was getting my teeth kicked in playing poker at the win. I just could not win a hand. I'm like, all right, guys, just hold my spot. I'm going to grab a beer. Wow. And like, you know, we'd be like this uh, board shorts, T-shirt, yeah. uh, sandals looking like homeless bum yeah. playing poker all day <laughs> and um and you know everybody else is all dressed tonight so i go uh -huh. to the bar i'm having a bear and this like an absolute 10 plus knockout wow. sits down and starts talking to me and i'm wow. like fuck yeah i still got it dude like Clearly. I'm, I'm feeling good oh like I, i'm super proud of myself and then all of a sudden she's like so like are we partying tonight and i was like Ah, uh, and I, I was so disappointed that wow. like she wasn't hitting on me that she was trying to get me yeah. to hire her. Mm -hmm. I was so disappointed. I said out way too loud. Ah, oh, fuck, you're a prostitute. And she's like, whoa, 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 like, like keep it down there, oh Haas. my god! And I'm like, I'm like no, at no, the no. table and everything. Yeah, at the bar. Wow. And wow. I was like, I was like, no, I'm sorry, ma'am. I don't. Blow I, and, then, and then I said, ma'am. And then she was even more offended. <laughs> I'm like, I don't mean to be disrespectful. Like, I just, I, I didn't, I didn't pick up the vibe. I'm, yeah. I'm not your guy. I'm not partying tonight. Best of luck wow. tonight. Um, but I was like, oh yeah, it's just, it's right there in your face all yeah. the time. And um, I've heard from some friends mm -hmm. um, that, uh, yeah, it's not cheap. So I totally believe the two to five billion dollar a it year figure. Sense. Um, Makes sense. So I'm like, bonkers. where are they getting this information from? You know, if these girls are doing it on the low, like yeah. how, you know? Well, I remember talking to a security guard, ironically, with my wife, okay. uh, one of the purple vested security guards. Mm -hmm. I think it was at the Encore. And I was like, hey, man, like, clearly, if I can pick them out, you can pick them out. Yeah. What's your guys' stance here? He's like, hey, it's a little bit of don't ask, don't tell, as long as they're not trying to rip somebody off or causing a scene. Yeah. And they're either gambling or drinking. We, so they know about it, we, too. Yeah, they know. They're like, we let them know. How could they not? Yeah. yeah exactly. Um, and uh, I have a buddy, actually, who I do jujitsu with, who used yeah. to run security uh, or was one of the security guards over at the Cosmo. Okay. And um, he's like, yeah, we would trespass them all the time. Like, we would let them, we would let them there until they caused a problem. But eventually, they can't help themselves. They drug somebody or get somebody wow. drunk, steal their Rolex. Once wow. they get, yeah, once they get reported and we have them on camera, then the next time they come in, we can trespass them. She's like, he's like, so like half my job was going down to the floor and being like, hey, Stacy, we've told you before, you're not welcome here anymore. Like, get the fuck out or we're going to wow. trespass you and send you to jail. Um, and that was, that was part of his gig. So. That is insane. Wow. So, so they kind of give them a couple chances. Yeah, they give them a couple chances. It yeah, sounds yeah. like, oh yeah. my God. So don't get kicked out of a casino for okay. any reason. Noted. Or get fresh with any guys <laughs> and steal their Rolex. Noted. Because you will not be welcome back. Noted. I was going to say, you said jujitsu. Have you ever did uh, jujitsu with uh, Dante? Uh, that's how we met. Oh my God, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, he rolls in some really, really short shorts. I see it. I and, see it. Uh, <laughs> and I was making fun of him. And I'm like, bro, those shorts are real short, man. You're about to give me a free show. And he's like, ah, oh, come to the club. I'll give you a show. And I was like, what do you do? And he's like, oh, I'm a club promoter. And of I'm course like, he did. Oh, okay, cool. I'm like, so there we go. Yeah, that, yeah he's the a trip, man. The best personality. So how does that <laughs> well, how does that work? By the way, when like, okay, yeah. let's say let's say Dante has some VIPs. Like, we got a bunch of friends coming in for a mortgage conference. Let's say we're going out. I'm like, uh, this is not really our vibe. But if if I was like, hey, Dante, we're gonna go to uh, we're gonna go to Encore. We're gonna get a table. And like, nobody's really looking to like end the night with anything because we're all happily married. But we just want yeah. some hot girls hanging out at our table. Yeah. Like, would he shoot you the DM and be like, hey, get down here with five of your friends? Or how does that work? <gasps> well, first of all, I don't really have too many Vegas friends. I mean, all the friends what? that I have. Oh, well, I moved in August, so I'm kind of new. Out here, oh, that's you know, right. you are yeah, new here. kind of new, but the biggest girls that I do have, I mean, one of my girls, Jasmine, she was from the Bay Area when I used to live out there, so she moves, she lives out here now, and we rekindled things, so that was really nice. But she's a Bay Area friend. The Vegas friends that I have met are from Dante, so just like the girls at the table and stuff, a couple of them are really nice. So we just got in contact and we saved each other's numbers, and we made like a little Vegas hoes group chat. And so whenever we are gonna, <laughs> it's funny. So whenever we are gonna go out, like, oh, who's going to excess tonight? You know, so those are my girls. But other than that, I don't really have other Vegas friends, just like right. party girl friends, you know?
Well, how does that work? But, like, you just walk up and you're like, "Hey, I'm a hot girl. I want straight to the front of the line." Or what? How does so, this work? well, we meet with we we meet with the promoters uh, at the front of the club before going in. So we all Got walk it. in together. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So that's how it works. We have to go in with them, or if they're already inside and they know you're coming late or whatever, you can say, "I'm with Dante." Uh, yeah, but you have to be on guest list and you have to show them the text or whatever. So it's a little process, but it's super easy to get in. Yeah. And you're a girl, so you don't pay for shit. Yeah, it's insane. That's what I'm saying. Vegas is for the ladies. Free what is the, everything? What's the most expensive thing you've had bought for you since you've been out here oh my god oh my god i have to sit and think for a second most expensive either, thing. either on only fans or in person in vegas what's uh, the most expensive thing that's been purchased for you or like the one transaction where you're like they paid two grand for something crazy or they paid your rent for pictures or something oh yeah okay so well i uh met my sugar daddy out here in vegas he was visiting from a different state um but he comes to visit me every so often and out here in vegas to pay me for my time and stuff like that so uh yeah after a day spending time with him he paid my rent so that is i guess you could say that other how than that you, i have to think rent? a little bit at the moment i'm paying 1400 for a studio so he yeah. paid 1400 bucks for yes. you to hang to out, to hang out with him. Like I said a little earlier, like to go um, down to the pool with him at the hotel that he was staying at, to go to the gym with him at the hotel he was staying at, to go out to dinner, just activities, just to like hang out with him, you know? Everything was super platonic. Like not every guy. No funny business. Like, no, he wasn't, no, he wasn't it made like me a creep. pecks on the cheek, but it was super comfortable. And he always told me if you want to leave, feel free to go whenever you want. Like if you want to be on your phone, be on your fucking phone. Like super comfortable, you know? And I, I felt comfortable even meeting him uh, for the first time. I'm like, and then after he got my number and he was like, oh, next time I'm in Vegas, I'd like to t like pay you for your time. I felt like, okay, I already met this guy. Seems like a cool vibe. I'll give it a shot. But if it was like over the phone or anything like online, I think I would have been too pussy how, to do how that. Did you, how did you meet him? I was at uh, uh, the Artesian, the, yeah, the Artesian pool um, after we got after I got, me and my friends got kicked out of the marquee pool day party. Uh, How do you, <laughs> dude, if you're a girl, it's almost impossible to get I kicked know, out of the party. I know, Well, I was with a couple others and uh, there was this one, I was telling everybody, keep it cool. They're always on you for certain things. And I guess one of my girls didn't freaking listen and she went with this guy and she took him into the side she took him inside the girl's bathroom and did oh. coke with him inside the stall. And I'm like, oh. why couldn't you just take the bag and take it to the bathroom yourself? Like, what the hell? Anyways, she got caught up. She got us kicked out. We could have stayed, but the whole group left. And we're like, let's just leave. Yeah. Went back to the RT. Drugs are like a hard no at the, at the pool parties no, and stuff. no. They do yeah. not play. Like, no no tolerance. Um, But yeah, so we went back to the hotel they were staying at. And it just all worked out perfectly. And they were all there. And they came up to us. We just started drinking a little bit. And he was feeling my vibe. And he was a cool guy. He's actually, um maybe I shouldn't say this. I don't know if you want to go. But he's actually a pilot. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, he makes really good money. But. Um, so yeah, and then he got my number and he lives out of state, but he was like, next time in Vegas, I'd like to pay you for your time and just like hang out. And I was like, okay, like you seem really cool. Like, fuck it, let's do it, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, and it was, it was his, when we met up and we like talked about like the money and everything, like how we were going to go about everything. It was his first time ever doing anything like that. And it was my first time as well. So we were able to like work around certain things and he was able to make me feel comfortable. So it, it just, it ended up working out and now he's. You know, my little sugar daddy. So I see him every so often. He comes down to Vegas every so often and he buys me things and pays me for my time. So that's really nice. So yeah, and he's a really nice guy. So yeah. And I've got to go back to the boyfriend thing. Like, yes. like yeah, so he knows about it. He doesn't like it. Um, yeah, at first, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So, and he likes, he just, he wants to take care of me himself. You know, he's right. like, I don't want anybody else doing it. I want to take care of you myself. But, you know, I mean, it, yeah, and I've respected that ever since we got in serious. I haven't been seeing him as often. Okay. Um, as often. As often. <laughs> Oh, you're so supposed to sorry. say as all you're supposed to say at all <laughs> wrong answer bro <laughs> but yeah so i don't know it's just i don't know it's he's not paying my bills so i gotta do what i have to do you know yeah, but yeah. in the most in the most respect as possible like right. I'm, I'm keeping it as platonic as possible so it's like i'm just hanging out and getting paid for it like you know you know I, i'm respecting you just you know? I, I again I always try to think about like where's the person in the audience that's rolling their eyes oh there's and, gonna be multiple oh that's fine I'll that, do it with you that, that's totally yeah there we go we, we'll, we'll roll our eyes yeah. but the reality is the reality is I know just as many respectful bankers lawyers uh whatever who 
they they would be rolling their eyes at this conversation. And by the way, they're effectively paying to bang their secretary. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, or they're, they're doing the same thing. Yeah, they're doing the same thing. At least you're open and honest about it, yeah. right? It's like, yeah. hey, this is what it is. It's transactional. Yeah. I understand it. Where, um, you know, I remember I knew this piece of shit human being. Like, all right, cool. You want to step out on your wife? That's fine. But like, I draw the line at stepping out on your kids. He was, um, he yes. was a loan officer who made Don't a do that. made a mountain of money. Uh, started cheating on his wife with his assistant. Whoa. And then what he did, this fucking piece of shit, he turned his assistant into the loan officer making like a million dollars a year. And he took the assistant role making 60,000 a year so he didn't have so, to pay alimony or child support. Whoa. And I was like- and So he switched and she was making the most money and he was making the least. Yeah, yeah. So his mistress whoa. started making all the money about a year before he left his wife. He just started, start, started bringing in the assistant income. Then he leaves his wife, admits that he was like cheating on her the whole time, but Le to, leaves to, his kids- <laughs> Leaves and, his kids too. Like, what yeah, do they do to you? What a loser, man. What and, a loser. And, and by the way, yeah, I don't. I haven't talked to the guy in a decade, but oh if he God. was watching this, he would be rolling his eyes like, oh, what a loser this pilot is or what a trashy oh. gal this is. And I'm like, no, bro, you're you're worse off because at least they're they're upfront about the transaction. Mm -hmm. And honest about I'm it. Sorry. And every, no, it's okay. Yeah, and honest about it. And everything is just so genuine and nothing's like nasty. It's just like a really good time. You know, I had just have like a older friend and he right. has a younger friend and- like I said, right. it's like as platonic as it could be. So, you know, and not, not every, everything is like that, but, and not every man wants that. Every, right. you know, more, most men want something out of it, but luckily right. I found a wonderful man. So to that, so, you know, let me ask, I don't even like to say that. I'm like, oh my God, it makes this sound horrible. My, my actual man is going to be very upset. Well, he doesn't, he doesn't <laughs> just don't tell him when it comes out. It'll be fine. He won't find it. But so here's the thing. Like if I you, I'm all about it. Sadly. If you, if you didn't have the boyfriend, right, whatever, yes. if he decided to go his own way, like, could you see that sugar daddy relationship morphing into a real relationship? I don't relationship? think so. I don't think so. You don't think so? No, I just think the age difference. I mean, I don't really care about age. I like older guys anyways, but I don't Shocking. know. The age difference. <laughs> Every woman likes older guys. I mean, because we mature. Oh, I mean, men mature two years, three years younger than us. So it's yeah, like, yeah. I mean, More than I'm. That. Yeah, basically, I'm more mature than most of the guys I've met my age. So it's yeah. like, I can't do it. Plus, you know, this group of guys my age is like they don't really have anything going for them yet and I want someone that's gonna like I mean I have my own shit going for me but at the same time I want someone to take care of me I was grown I grew up like that my dad always gave me you know in to an extent but like right. you know he he took care of me he gave me what I want every time I go visit home he's the first the first thing he's the first one to check on my car and make sure everything's okay right. like I'm his little baby you know he always treats me like a princess so I want my man to treat me that way you know and a lot of people my age don't are not ready for that and I feel like yeah. I've been around the ringer like I'm ready to not settle down but like find somebody that is like financially stable and like ready to take care of me in a way so yeah but like, I don't know, he's just like a little older and not, you know, in a way, not really my type. Like, it's just, you know, he's amazing. And, <laughs> but I don't, I don't think so. I Got don't it. think so. We're just two different lives, two different people. Like I have a little spice and spunk to me that I don't feel that it's just, you know, I, I want, I want the same yeah. reciprocated in a way. Yeah. So we talked about like what's next, right? Like you yes. want to buy a house, you want to buy some yeah, real estate. I do. Start, start I do. some passive income. And buy an Airbnb, rent it out and stuff like that. That's what one of my guy friends is doing right now. He just got a real estate license, Jordan Wong. Shout out to him. He's been my, been my best friend since we were little kids. Uh, and now he just, he just literally put his Airbnb together and he is like basically rent it out until December. So yeah. all this money coming in, I cannot wait to get my license and start getting into that because that's where the money is at. Also with solar too, like, oh my God, this year to date, what is it? March, April, it's April. So already we made like two, $3 million in sales. So solar is also where it's at. It's insane. So hopefully in the future, get my license, real estate, I can sell solar with my home. So, you know, that's what I'm, Aiming working for. towards. Yeah, working awesome. towards. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's funny. There, there's a meme that I've seen go around LA forever and then, you know, having a house up here in Vegas for years, a meme that goes around Vegas. And it's like, it's like, it? it's like 18 year old girl, hostess at Outback, 21, um, you know, bottle service girl. Trying to be a real estate. Tw tw 27, <laughs> um, working at the day clubs. 30, luxury real estate agent. Yeah. Like, why Why does every hot girl in LA and Vegas eventually try to become a realtor? Is I there like know. is there like a pipeline from the Tao Beach Club to the real right? estate licensing department? I've also department? seen those memes too. It's like a, a bottle girl failed her real estate license or real estate test three times, four times. <laughs> right, right. It's crazy. I don't know. I mean, I feel like being in that scene, you're already good with talking to people and 
and like yeah. being open and, and, you know, making people feel good. And like real estate is kind of the same thing here. I mean, other than that, it's harder than it looks. I mean, already getting into it, it's like so much reading, so much yeah. you comprehension, comprehension, like on these things. So it's harder than it looks, ladies and gents, but Anyways, maybe that's why, you know, they, they find it easy talking to people and that's kind of what real estate is. You market yourself, you're going out there, making good relationships, relationships with people, having to communicate and yeah, yeah I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the, re <laughs> um, the real reason. A, a friend of mine has a, uh, I'll be careful what I say. A uh, friend of mine's son is friends with my son. That's how we met. Our sons are friends. He's amazing. He's got a great family, wonderful wife. His wife is a bottle service girl, one of the pool clubs here. Ugh. And I'm like, I'm like, hey, good for you, man. She probably crushes it financially. Da, wow. da, da. He's like, bro, she's the best salesman ever. And I'm wow. like, I'm like, how so? He's like, he's like, when's the last time that somebody convinced you that a fifty dollar six pack of beer was like a good deal? Damn. And I'm like, uh, yeah, never, never. She's like all day long. She's just all selling and convincing and selling and selling and upselling. Yeah, and I got like, her seventy five dollars. Seventy five dollars. That okay. is. Yeah, so $75 yeah. for a six-pack of beer. He's like, if she can sell that, she can sell real estate. So, you know. That's uh, what I'm saying, yeah. We're, we're always talking like he's in the financial world, and yeah. he's like, dude, as soon as she's ready to go be like a broker or something, she'll crush it. Because if she can talk sober, guys, because usually people are sober when they get to the right, pool. When they get there, yeah. yeah you're you're like, trying to talk him into spending all this money on these basic-ass bottles. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If she can talk like $10,000 upcharge, then she can sell a fucking house. Yes. I'm like, yeah, good point, yeah. bro. Good point. Yes, because these tables are a couple grand and the bottles are like a thousand dollars each you can get it at the grocery store for 50 bucks you're paying a oh. thousand at the day clubs and speaking of bottle girls oh my god i also did auditions in january super crazy super cutthroat it, thousands of people that can you auditioned explain, can you oh, explain the bottle girl audition because this is one of the craziest things i've ever heard it's insane i've never done anything like this in my entire life i did not know even what to expect um but i showed up with a headshot stand in line for a couple hours you go in all these hot beautiful people like beautiful girls everywhere banging bodies bikinis half naked like just so much competition it humbles you really quick like you think you're the baddest bitch and you go around and you're like holy fuck like these yeah. women are beautiful long hair just oh my god beautiful and yeah, so because the the Encore Beach Club, if I remember correctly, yeah. they were hiring like two hundred girls, and they had Whoa. like forty thousand applicants or something. Yeah, like the hottest girl from every town in America was flying into Vegas wow. to do the application. Wow! So like when you did it, how many girls were there? Oh what? my god, thousands and yeah. thousands. I mean, I there was a couple. There, the auditions lasted a couple days, and I only obviously went one day out of all those right. days. You know, so who? I mean, when I went, there was thousands and. I didn't even go to the other couple of days. So yeah, it, that's very right. So and like, I even, what were the tears? Did you make it deep into the process? So, or? No. So sadly, no. And I, I mean, after my audition, I was like, I know I'm not getting it. You know, right. I kind of stuttered a little bit. It was just very nerve wracking. I never done anything like that. They kind of just ask you basic questions. Like, what do you do for work? Um, and oh God, I don't even remember, but like just basic questions, you know, and then it's like 10 seconds, 15 second audition. And then you walk off and then you're like, okay, now I wait, you know, and they don't email you. They don't do anything. It's just like, you know, they post on their Instagram. Okay. We got our models and you're like, okay, fuck. Obviously I didn't get it. You know? So oh. yeah, but I know a girl from Reno. Um, and by the way, you just said a key word. They're not hired as servers. They're hired as models. As cocktail servers, cocktail servers. Oh, yeah. they are. Yeah. Okay. Cocktail servers. Cause yeah. I remember at the win, Steve Wynn is just a, a amazing pig yeah um total to, total just chauvinist <laughs> um for a long time until the union stepped in he hired all of his cocktail waitresses yeah. through the entire casino wow. as models okay so if they gain 10 pounds he could fire them wow you, you can't fire a cocktail waitress that's part of the union no. but you can fire you can fire a model if you don't like the way they look that's so insane. for the first couple of years that the win was open all of the cocktail waitresses were models wow. so that they could fire them at will if they like gain five pounds wow crazy i've never heard of that yeah damn that's insane yeah yeah but now i think wow. it's all unionized and so yeah well there's... no because every year the girls have to re-audition so it's not they're not they're not you get the job you're not you're not in there for years. You're in there for the season. And then the next auditions, you have to audition again. So oh. yeah, I know, I know. A lot of girls get it again, but imagine the girls that don't like, damn, like I just- I know one. Like, yeah, do you? I know I know one that was um, like, oh. like the DJ booth waitress, wow. cocktail waitress at the um, uh, the one at the Cosmo. What's, wow. the, what's the club there? Uh, uh, 
Encore? Uh, Marquis. Marquis. The Marquis. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So she <laughs> she was like of, she, oh, there you go. <laughs> she was one of like the girls at the Marquis. Wow. And this year she did not get renewed, and so she's at like a tier two or tier three or tier Imagine four. Imagine that. Pool. Imagine and that. And she's pretty upset. Oh yeah, I would be upset uh, too. Imagine how much you're making like six figures in in six a season figures in, in a five months, four months. It's fucking crazy yeah. and imagine you don't get the next year it's like fuck what do i do now you know you have to pay for your living she like, made like a hundred grand in four or five months oh my god yeah i mean it's it's hard work those girls are working their ass off they in the sun delivering their- bottles mm-hmm. um delivering it's drinks hot out here 110 120 in the summer yeah fun. yeah and putting Wearing up with high all heels all day bad guys like I, it would never be a job that i would want obviously yeah. i don't have the assets for that but um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she she didn't get in. She's pretty pretty Damn, upset. Honestly. That's kind of upsetting. It's, it's a big pay cut. Oh, a big pay cut. Yeah, you're yeah. making six figures in the next year. Barely. She making may anything. want to talk to you about an OnlyFans. Oh so my god, we'll we should out. bring her on here. <laughs> yeah, I'll get her interview. All right. So what wow. what's what's the what's the questions that I'm forgetting to ask about OnlyFans or things that you've encountered <sighs> or think ways that you've made money or like t- tell me tell me a couple things that I forgot to ask I don't know I mean other than that I think you've done pretty good I wanted to talk about a little bit like moving to Vegas and like kind of being born in the Bay Area and then moving to Arizona and then moving to Vegas yeah, what I was had that no, like? yeah it was crazy so I'm 23 I was born and raised in the Bay Area 21 years never left same house grew up in it was crazy and then my parents wanted to get out of California because my dad was retired yeah. um he like, get me the fuck out of Cali. Right, right. Um, and so moved us in the middle of nowhere, Kingman, Arizona, which is an hour and a half away from here. Middle of nowhere. Middle of nowhere. Like, Scottsdale, Glendale. I mean, the fun college party town is like three and a half hours away from Kingman. It's the opposite side of the desert. Yeah. It's closer to Vegas. So it was a drastic change. Like, I left all my friends. I left everything. And I was in the middle of nowhere. It was so boring. M- retirement area. Older people everywhere. Nobody like me. No one like even like us. Like, older people everywhere. The only thing to do on the weekends was go to the bar, play pool. I became, you know, even closer with my parents. They became my best friends. I did everything with them. But, like, every so often my friends would come down to visit in Vegas. And I would come down to party because it was the only thing to do, you know. And after a while, I was like, I need to get out of here I'm it makes me lazy I'm so unmotivated to do anything and I started looking at some places and I moved down to Vegas and now I live here on my own so it's a big change for me but I needed it and I feel like I've been thriving a lot more since I've been out here and it feels good so and I go back to visit every so often I was just there for a couple days a couple days ago so and what what do you feel is like the bigger opportunity because obviously you can be an OnlyFans girl from anywhere I know it's Um, just what's what's the like is it the opportunity to attract more fans or take better pictures that too, or but just to have, have a- more fun and just like that is no place for a 23 year old girl you're right. in the middle of the desert which is cool like you know my dad's an ex-marine and he has all these guns so every so often we just like drive five minutes out in the desert we shoot which is really fun we go on his atv it's it's fun it, just like riding through the desert but other than that there's nothing to do out here in vegas there's pool parties nightclubs there's bars there's yoga class there's pole class there's like you know, like just a lot of things you could do. There's people you could hang out with. There's people like us just like yeah. being around older people all the time. Like I stood out like crazy. I would wear something like this and I get eyes on me everywhere I went. You right, know, right. they just never seen anyone like me before out there. So I don't know. It's just like a different world and going from the Bay Area, which is kind of like Vegas in a way, city life, San Francisco. It was so crazy. Like go, just like all that. Yeah. Basically. You went from city girl to rural girl. To nothing. Yeah, yeah. Literally nothing. So I'm, I'm kind of happy to be in Vegas. But do you ever, do you ever get a little worried that like in Vegas? Cause like if I was a 20 year old in Vegas, yeah. I'd be, I'd be either a multi-billionaire. Cause I would have like created some crazy <laughs> business and met Anthony Damn, Shea before he died or something. Um, <laughs> or I'd be dead broke, gambling, degenerate drug addict. Do you ever get yeah. a little worried that like with the party scene and with being young and attractive and what, do you ever worry that you can get kind of like lose yourself in the craziness? Yeah, definitely. And that's what, what I said before, like you have to find a nice balance. Like I don't gamble unless my friends come down to visit and they want to gamble. I'll gamble a little bit, but I'm not pretty good at it. So I try not to, I, I stay away from it. I don't gamble by myself. And like I said, being a girl, you don't really pay to get in clubs or to pay right. for anything. So other than that, I don't really spend too much money. You know, I pay my rent. I, buy groceries i you work out a lot i do work out a lot yes i'm a gym girl so (laughs) but yeah so i don't really spend too much money as you would think i right you know i'm i'm pretty good with my money so yeah other than that i i feel like i do pretty good out here do you worry about like the drugs the partying all that stuff like is Uh, that is that attractive at all because i know i know you like to go to the rave scene and stuff like that and i know there's a certain 
culture there. Yeah. But do you do you worry about that or is it just like, hey, I got control of it? I got control I of it. Yeah. yeah. If anything, I was doing a little bit more when I was a little younger when I first got into it. But like I could enjoy things and I could enjoy the rave scene. I loved EDM music itself. So I could go yeah. sober. Right. Maybe drink a little bit because it's really fun. But like I could do these things sober just because I am a fun girl and I could have fun without doing that stuff awesome. you know so yeah i spend money if i want to i have it so i can but i'm pretty good with saving yeah awesome yeah what else did i forget to ask about the only fan girl life or <sighs> oh fan- yeah with like content and stuff i also make like gr- girl on girl or also like yeah which is really fun i haven't done anything too crazy but just like sexy photos of like right you know nude together or, like making out together or like you know and i've also like boy on girl so that's pretty interesting and some people like to have you spice it up a little bit rather than just seeing you all the time you know like some people are like oh let me see you girl on girl let me see you with boy like and how do you find the are these other creators other only fans yeah people, so or? some of the some of the content uh, that i've made in the past uh one of them was from a girl that i knew that was also doing only fans she's like a friend so i did it with her um played with some anal plugs on camera so that was really fun and then a couple of the girls were from chic models so made some content with them just like sexy photos and stuff stuff um nothing too crazy never you know got in bed with the girl before what's crazy is that you said uh nothing too crazy and anal plugs in the same sentence <laughs> I, I would say 99.99999 percent of america <laughs> will never say the word ah, nothing too crazy and <laughs> anal plugs in the same sentence well so <laughs> i guess it, it is pretty crazy is it is that like i mean in the moment when you're there is there like um eroticism or a sexuality to it or just like dude this is a job i'm taking a pic i'm taking pictures with another girl there's nothing sexual about it this is just like this goes here that goes there anal plug goes here (laughs) take a photo sell the photo or is there is there anything sexy about it it is it is pretty sexy it is but at the same time it is it it is but it comes to be like me being straight like i really wish that i was more into it with women like i feel like it's just like for fun and for like you know the sexy thing and i'm probably gonna get a lot of hate from that from saying that but like i don't know it's just i think it's it's fun to have fun with your girlfriends and and um and make sexy content i just sometimes i wish i was like more into it like right fuck me right now you know right <laughs> but yeah that yeah yeah all right yeah what else did i forget to ask oh, I, I feel like the gold's coming out right now as i'm just getting you to I talk know, more i know <laughs> i like it i'm not too sure um yeah well, you've been doing great i think yeah this has been really good um Oh God! What what do, what do people pay by the way for like girl on girl stuff? Because here's the it's other- all custom. Like a, I would start like maybe eighty, a hundred you know, for, for a picture. For pictures, I do like sets, so I make it kind of worth it. So it's not just one picture; it's like probably ten of them. Yeah, um, probably like fifty to a hundred. Because here's you know? the, here's the thing that I don't understand, like. Porn is pretty ubiquitous. I know. Right? You like, can find it anywhere. You can go anywhere at any time and find any type of porn for free. Yeah. So I just don't understand the appeal of like, what's the personal rapport with Lacey that people are like, ooh, this is special. I know. I get a picture from Lacey where it's like, like, like I said, you're attractive, but you can go yeah. find any flavor of girl you Literally, want. Go see on a Bella the Danger, Riley Reed, if you anywhere. Want, you yeah, know? yeah. So like, what's the what's the attraction to like paying Lacey? It's just it because it just all ties into like you having your fans, you know, people that already like you, and then just like, damn, I want to see more of her. Like some people just like like a girl so much they rather just like pay to just see what she's all about. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Which is weird to me too. I'm always like, damn, yeah, porn's free. Like you can yeah. go on XX videos, Pornhub, whatever, and watch these banging ass porn stars that are super fucking hot. But like some guys just want more personal, someone they could like talk to personally and right. like get personal content, get custom content, you know? What are the odds are gonna get custom content from Riley Reed? You know, Zero. she's too big. Yeah. So a lot of guys like go for like smaller girls that are able to give them kind of what they want. Yeah. yeah. So do you, uh, that's an interesting, uh, an interesting thing. Like, yeah. do you think there's a personal connection there because you've used your real name because yeah. you're a real person? Like people can see this through line of who you are over the last yeah. eight years. So do you think it's that personal connection where they're like, yeah, I'm never going to insert whoever's porn star name here. I don't, yeah. I don't even know. Um, but they'll, there, there is a, there is a weird, almost fetish over the personal relationship, even it though they is. know, even though they, they know, in their heart of hearts, they're never going to date you or they're never going to meet yeah. you. There's like a personal connection there that, yeah. that makes it more enjoyable or sexy. Yeah, to them and that's where whatnot. the fantasy kind of peeks in. Like I, in in a way, like I watch like 
fantasy porn. Like I'll watch like gangbangs or like, you know, double tip penetration and stuff like that. You know, things that I've, ne- I'd never do, but it's just like the fantasy of it. So that's probably why people, some people are, are down with it, you know, not just cause like, Oh, if I pay for this, like I better fuck her or like, I better go, right. I better be able to meet up with her. But it's like, some people just like the fantasy of it. Like I'm never going to be able to do anything with her. So I'll yeah. just pay for it. That would almost, that would like almost ruin it for them. Yeah. 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 Some people like the, What's the word? I would imagine that because porn is free, yeah. perhaps part of the fetish is that nobody else is viewing what they're viewing and it's yes. all theirs. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I would yeah. imagine. Yeah. It's like ownership. It's like yeah. the same same reason people want to own famous paintings, even though those paintings, you can get a print of it for 49 bucks. Right. Right. Like you can, you can get a print of almost any painting that's ever been sold for 50 bucks, get it framed. Yeah. But it's like people will pay Thirty million dollars to own the painting because right. it's theirs. It's theirs, yeah. And they, yeah, like he just said, they want that ownership of it. Like I, they probably only think like, oh, she's only sending this to like ten other guys, rather than just right. like Pornhub. You could see a million views, you know, like right. anybody could just see it. Yeah, it's just more wow. personal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you definitely need to hire Chris as your yeah. camera guy. He, he can, Got you, Chris. He can take you. He can take you to the moon. He can make all kinds of great content for you. Um, all right, so a couple questions I always yeah, like to please, end on. Um, and now we have to add this question to the ending question. Yes, like, yes, do yes. you have a foot fetish? I do. <clears throat> I do to, to an extent. Yes, I think feet are pretty. I mean, I like pretty feet. I do. I love my feet. Um, I In bed, I'm always playing footsies or like under the table. I'm, I'm surprised I'm not playing footsies with you right now. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> but, wife is 18 <laughs> feet away, so that's not going to happen. Never going to happen. But you know what I mean. So I'm right. just, yeah, I kind of do. I kind of do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Got it. Um, and then going into like, we're filming this uh, beginning of 2023 in April. This will probably come out the summer of 2023. Okay, in, okay. Unless you need it to come out sooner for something that you're promoting. But we'll make sure that no, we no, promote. No. I one would love more... to see it though sooner. Oh yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. What, one more time. Shout out where people can find you. Uh, yeah, Instagram, Lacey Rumsey. Twitter, How you spell it? L-A-C-E-Y-R-U-M-S-E-Y. Uh, okay. Twitter, whoa, it's Lacey. OnlyFans, Lace Silk. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give you only only <clears throat> other Instagram official silk lace. Uh, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna give you a pro tip. I, I got this from my buddy Steve Sims, who's like a marketing genius. Please help. He's like across all platforms you have to say you have to have the same name so i, I used i used to be I like know. facebook forward slash uh lender scott and then yeah. on instagram i was scott groves team and then mm. over and he's like bro he's like it's too fucking confusing i know people are gonna get confused about it yeah your link tree yeah. needs to be like Scott L. Groves, L is in lover or loser, depending on what you think of yeah. me. So it's either Scott L. Groves, uh, Linktree, Scott L. Groves, Facebook, Scott L. Groves, Twitter, Scott yeah. L. Groves, Instagram. So you got you got you got to solidify that brand, man. I know, Chris I know, can help I need you with this. to. I know, I need to. And I, my Twitter was Lacey Rumsey, but I wanted. I mean, since I've been getting more into real estate, like I wanted a real estate Twitter, so oh. I made another Twitter and named that Lacey Rumsey, and then I made my actual Twitter that I do everything on. Whoa, it's Lacey. So I changed my Twitter name, and then my YouTube is still Lacey. Rumsey, um, but you, then you got to get with Chris and segment this. I so know. where you got you got Lacey Rumsey everywhere as professional, and Ugh. then Silk Lacey or Real Silk or whatever yes, the fuck you want to be. That's for the sexy time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I know, time. I know. When you read that up, I'm like, yeah, people are probably getting confused about it, but I guess that's just how I have it right now. All but. right, so quasi foot fetish. Yes. Um, uh, what are you most looking forward to in 2023? Like, what what's coming up on your <laughs> radar, either professionally, OnlyFans, new features concerts you're going to like what are you pumped oh up God. for 2023 i am just pumped up for this year just in general i have a lot of faith that it's going to be my best year yet um i'm looking to just have a lot of fun this summer pool parties nightclubs also get my real estate license and and take my test and become fucking licensed by the end of the year um make more money in solar keep doing my only fans and keep just like living life um and just enjoying the time that i have out here in vegas i mean i'm 23 i'm still young so i have to remember that you know, to still have fun with it. And I, I think I do a good job at it. So just, I don't know, just enjoy life. Last year wasn't a really good year for me and the previous years weren't good, COVID, everything. So I'm just looking forward to my best year yet. So nice. a lot of festivals coming up though. I'm going to Coachella next week. Nice. I have lightning in a bottle coming up. I have Costa Rica. I'm going to Bali, Indonesia. And then a week after I'm going to Costa Rica. Fucking insane. In, what are you doing going in Bali? Going with my solar company. My, he, he plans these extravagant 
fucking trips. We just went to Lake Havasu nice. all together, paid for everything, all paid for, literally went for free. Um, and then in December, we went to Big Bear. Everything was free as well. And then this upcoming summer, we're going to Bali, Indonesia, come back for a couple of days, and then I go with my girls to Costa Rica. So it's going to be a busy year for me, and I'm really excited. So How many girls are you going to Costa Rica with? Four of us. That's awesome. Yeah, me and my besties. So I'm really excited. It's a little girls trip. My Two of my girls are graduating, so it's a little like graduation trip, you know? So Awesome. Yeah. So lots of travel. A lot of traveling, lots of events, lots of lot everything. Lot PG-13 and then R-rated photos. Oh, yeah. Make sure you catch that on my OnlyFans. <laughs> R-rated on OnlyFans or follow on Instagram and have the PG-13 version. Yes. yes. Um, and then uh, just out of curiosity, do you follow anybody on OnlyFans? Do you pay I for do. anybody? I do. Yeah. So for I sub- real? Oh, most definitely. Yeah. I like to have some inspiration sometimes and just support other girls. So I have subscribed to just like small OnlyFans girls in the past that I wanted to see more of just to see the, you know, posts and stuff. I also subscribe to like Riley Reed and Lena the Plug. Who's who's to- Riley Reed? Just out of curiosity. Oh my God. You don't know? No, no. She's I'm just- telling you, this is not my world, man. Oh my man. God. Riley Reed is like one of the most favorite po- most famous porn stars in the game. I'm pretty sure everyone knows Riley Reed. Okay. I also met her in person a couple months ago. I went to the AVN porn convention out here in Vegas and I Can met you a expl- whole- Oh, you have to explain to people what I went by myself. I went by myself. It's Adult Video Network or- yeah, it's, Oh God. What, adult what Video. AV? I don't know what the N stands for. I forgot. Yeah. But it's Adult- Video. Chris will look this up. Something. He's good yeah. at this stuff. Um, but it's a porn convention, so a bunch of porn stars went, um, and I got to meet a couple. I went by myself just because, like, you know, I kind of watched these girls, and I, I thought it would be really fucking fun. And I met Riley Reed, talked to her for, like, five fucking minutes. She wrote me a really uh, – I bought, like – not bought, but she gave me one of her, like, posters, and she, like – was hiding what she was like writing me and stuff. And then she it was super naughty, but she was just like, I want to eat your pussy. Like you naughty little girl, you know, she was feeling me. Uh, but <laughs> I met a lot of porn stars. That was really fun. News. Adult oh. video news. No, no. AVN porn convention. It's the adult video news for real. No. This is why nobody can remember it. Cause it seems so weird. It's total non sequitur. Adult video news. That can't be it. You know what's really funny? It, well, by design, they always have CES, the Consumer Electronic Software Fair, okay. right before or right after the AVNs so that all the mm. computer nerds, all the super rich tech people can either fly in early without explaining to their significant other why, or they can stay <laughs> late to go to the AVN awards. And, yes. um Well, it kind of makes sense now that you think about it because the main thing is the awards and like- yeah. The- News they report on yeah, adult. It's like, it's, yeah. like I mean, it's the Emmys of the porn industry. Oh you know? yeah, definitely. I, um, I, I I wouldn't have guessed that for a you know a million, <laughs> a million dollars. years. Yeah. yeah. What's it's crazy insane. is I remember seeing like a whatever a, a Instagram and it looked like a Saturday night skit. Yeah. Because it was like and the best award or the the award for best double penetration goes to wow. whoever Riley yeah. whatever you name <laughs> and she comes up and she's like I just want to thank God and my mom and I was like for double penetration <laughs> Whoa. award of the year it was very it was very weird and I was like is this a Saturday Night Live skit wow. oh no it was the AVNs and that's oh how I God. that's how I understood what the AVNs were crazy wow um, crazy all right so you experience. went to the convention yes by myself it was definitely an experience I met a whole bunch of porn stars took pictures with them Kazumi it was really fun um, and then also they had like things set up too. So like they had this like guy, um, with like a bondage set up. So he was like, it was like a bondage swing. So I obviously volunteered and he basically tied me up in the air and all these different positions and all these people all around watching me being all tied up. It was really fun. Definitely into the bondage. So it was like my first time ever being tied up in the air before it was mm-hmm. very interesting so it was very fun such an experience especially going by myself too but didn't really have anybody to go with but i wanted to go have a good time and i watched these girls so i'm like let's do it interesting. so yeah it was a very very good time yeah a lot of men a lot of geeks you know computer geeks like they're always on the computer watching yeah. this <laughs> so it was a hundred dollars to get in i paid that hundred dollars so like, I'm seeing my girls. Fascinating. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, and then, so you're looking forward to a lot of travel uh, yes, next yes, year's yeah, AVN yeah, yeah. Awards. Yes. And I have to ask, because this is one of my favorite questions to ask, what yes. is your favorite movie and why? Oh, God. Oh, God. That's a hard question. Well, favorite genre, scary movies. Love scary movies. Really? Grew up on scary movies. Oh, my God, dad. I hate horror films. Oh, I know a lot of people that do. You guys are pussy. Total. Pussies. Total. My dad would um, actually force me to watch scary movies when I was a little girl until I would cry. It was kind of torture, yeah. And he kind of brings it up to this day. So I'm a little traumatized in certain ways, but he just wanted me to be afraid of certain things and have, you know, like 
the world isn't all rainbows and you know so right. but yeah so i would just say scary movies i love all the saws the hostels the oh, i also like the so creepy gruesome. stuff yeah i like the sinisters the conjurings um i like the hills have eyes just like just scary shit by you the know? way hills have eyes is why i cannot drive through the desert in Same. vegas by myself at the dark especially i'm like oh, creepy creepy it's yeah. creepy yeah so i do love scary movies i can't really pick a, a certain one but I am a scary movie freak. Scary I grew movie up freak. on them, you know. I, I watch comedies sometimes or like actions. I love actions. I love Do you like, like the, the thrillers. Scream movies? I like scream movies. Yeah, sometimes they're a little cheesy, but yeah. I can get into it definitely. Yeah. I really enjoyed the first one just yeah. because it was like kind of genre bending. Yeah, but like then whatever, they're all yeah. the same after that. <laughs> kind but of, um, yeah. oh, ironically, the same ex girlfriend who is the not surprising uh, murder detective in LAPD. Oh my God, yeah. She loved horror movies when we wow. were dating, and she talked me into going. I don't know. This was probably. 15, 17 years ago, wow. she talked me into going to like Saw 3 or 2 wow. or whatever. That one. And movies. I was like, <laughs> in the movies, yeah. And I was like, this is the most horrific thing I've ever seen. Like, wh how is this enjoyable to you to watch? Like, I, I just, it's, it's, it's like. <laughs> we seem crazy. Yeah, it's like it's snuff films or something. It's, I know. Have you ever seen 8mm with, uh, with Nicolas Cage? Mm, that sounds so familiar. Okay. Absolute must see where yeah. like Nicolas Cage is a private detective and some older lady calls him in and is like, hey, you know, my husband died. We had to drill into his private safe to get his Whoa. trust. And we found these eight millimeter videos that look like snuff porn. Whoa. And so she hires him as a private investigator to go find out, was this just like acting or like she just had to know, like was right. my husband a freak and into this wow. stuff? And so he goes to this whole underworld of like nasty pornography and the end of the movie is fucking mind bending. Wow. And um, it's a horrific horror film. It's kind of like Seven with Brad Pitt. Okay. It's along those same lines. So okay. it's like- So that's the, a horror film. Oh yeah. It's, Whoa. It's, but it's like, it's more like suspense than like yeah, horror, like stuff jumping out of you. Yeah. But like, I just remember watching Seven and Eight Millimeter back to back one weekend and I was like what I just had a gross feeling in the pit of my stomach for like wow. months wow so wow. For, for those of you that enjoy it go watch those two films oh, yeah. back to back seven okay. and then eight you're gonna millimeter. have to tell me about that in a little bit I'll write it on my phone or yeah, something. I'll, yeah I'll, I would I'll love send to it check over. those out because I don't think I've ever watched either of those and yeah I'm always up to know about another good horror movie oh so. god they're horrible like that wow. that, that dark <laughs> suspense just like it messes with my soul like I gotta I feed know. my soul with good stuff I know I know yeah a lot of people say that too and my uh my boss at the moment he also hates horror films like he will not get near one and just I'm like with him yeah and it's like, oh, you're lame. <laughs> All right, man. Well, hey, when you break some milestone, whatever it is for you, you know, yeah. 100,000 a year or 100,000 a month or whatever it is on OnlyFans, I'd love to have you back on oh. to like talk about the economics of it. Yeah. And then, you know, maybe if your opinion changes, like if you give it up and you're like, oh, that was stupid. This is not for me. Um, I'd, I'd love to have you back on yeah. and chat about it, but it was definitely, or even maybe after my Bali trip, Costa Rica, tell you about the slutty activities, <laughs> something fun. I don't know. Something but fun. I would love to hop on another pod podcast. This was definitely a good time. Super fun, man. Thanks yeah. for being on. Thank you so much. Talk I appreciate soon. you. Stop. Scott. Bye. <laughs> Bye.